Oh, uh, you can do the intro. I'm good. Who, who wants to do the intro? Who else is doing the intro? Are we introing anybody? Tyler. All right, I, Tyler. I can take control. I could make this a Red X webinar real quick with my intro. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost we're almost ready to when we're live on to um into let me see the Facebook. Facebook. Yep, there, there we, we go, buddy. Are. You're up, Tyler. Right. We're, we're live. We're live. <laughs> We're live. You know what I need? I need somebody in the corner to be like five, four, four three, three, two, one. Let's go. Right. But we're live, everybody. Hey, this is going to be really, really fun today. We're going to learn some cool stuff. I'm Tyler with Red X. We've got John Key, Mark. Mark, you and I don't know each other. I don't know we've ever met, but this is uh, this is going to be fun. We're shaking hands. Mark very, is amazing. Nice. I've nice. known Mark for a little bit. I got to know him over three months, Tyler. He's an amazing productivity coach for LCA. Excellent. Um, and Tristan Ahmada team. Um, but he's, yeah, he's amazing. He's go-getter. Let's go. Hey. And John, he's awesome yeah, too. Was, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, this is a good, this is a good group of people. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Excited to be here. So uh, we've got some cool things that we're going to talk about. I I, uh, I can't remember what the title of today's webinar was, so maybe I, I maybe I shouldn't have been the guy. Junkie remembers though. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to turn the time over to Junkie to tell Rewind. us what this webinar is about. <laughs> Rewind. Let's go. All right, we're having too much fun here. All right, welcome everybody to our one of our most favorite um you know uh, clients and sponsors here at LCA. We've got Tyler from Red X. Welcome, Tyler. And all of you Thank guys you. that are here, please tell us City and State. See, Tristan's trained me very well. Um, City and State, everybody, let us know where you're from. We'd love to know. And Tyler, gosh, I love Red X. Just let me just put that out there. We're going to talk about geo farming today and circle prospecting, one of my two favorite topics. So here we go. We've got people from Malibu. Oh my God, look, Malibu, Tristan. Oh, that's you, dude. Come that's on. me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally excited introducing you. Right. We, got, <laughs> we got Sacramento too. We've got Kansas in the house. Awesome, Georgia. All right, keep it going, but let's get on to the good stuff so we can start rolling in some dough here. Let's talk to Tyler. Hey, Tyler. Hi. <laughs> Too much coffee this morning. So take it away, Tyler. Tell us a little bit about GeoLeads. Um, tell us about circle prospecting. I know I've had major success with Red X with all of this good stuff, but all the, the, the is all yeah. Good. So it, it, there's there's um, there's two ways to get business, right? And that's and that's what it comes down to. It doesn't. I don't. And it does. This isn't just real estate. This is. This is your 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 insurance agent. This is your plumber. This is your you know anybody that you buy or sell or provide with. That this this is going to be. There's two ways that they can get business. Two ways we can get business. You either hunt for business or you farm for it. Those right. are the only two ways that you can build for build build your business. Now, when we look at like traditional advertising, when you look at a a billboard or a radio ad or TV commercial. Fills, right for those of us that are old enough to remember what those are mm -hmm. uh those the traditional advertising is very much a farming mentality like all of us we all know what 15 minutes can save us we know it can save us 15 percent or more in our car insurance because geico has farmed the heck out of us what they've done is they've planted a seed and they're cultivating and, and, and nurturing that relationship over time in hopes that when we look for car insurance that we go to geico um and uh, and and there we can we could name we could spend an hour naming off different companies that that we just know right they've been, they've begun building a relationship mm -hmm. with us um, and then there's and then there's the hunting side of it right there's a company here in in Utah where we're located uh, that uh, that hires five thousand men and women every summer to go out and knock doors and sell their products door to door right very much a let's target a specific prey and take them down and real estate is no different. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you look at something like expired listings, guys, that is very much a hunting. I'm going to take down prey right now type of type of lead yeah. generation. If yeah. somebody came and said, man, I, I, I've got to do something right now, I'd be like, get on the phone and call expired listings because you can take something down right now. But um, ultimately, even here at Red X, we hope that that we that we can build a business well enough by hunting to get to the point where we can just farm that, that database, right? Um, uh, in other words, there's no better way to build the database that you want to build than by putting people in it with, with very thoughtful and uh, very intentional meaning, right? So expireds for sell by owners, but geo farming fits right into that. Geo farming is really interesting because it's a little bit of both, right? It's, it's, uh, it kind of, kind of blurs the lines between the hunting and the farming. 
So can we talk um, a little bit more, Tyler? Yes. I just, I want to know more about geo, geo farming because yeah. we've not really tapped it. So tell us the little nitty gritty about it. Um, show us around if you can um, yeah. about geo farming. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll share my screen here in just a minute and show what the GeoLeads tool in Red X is like. But here's, here's okay. the thing is, is, uh, is prior to the internet, um, when, when, you were, um, when you were trying to grow your business, you, you, you grew geographically, right? That was how you grew it. And, and now with the invention of the internet, we can do that, but we can also grow demographically. Geo farming is a little bit the same as we can use the tools within GeoLeads to grow geographically. We can also use that to grow demographically a bit. We can target specific neighborhoods. If you want to move into a higher price point um, for your average sale, uh, it's easy then to target some of those higher end neighborhoods, zip codes with, uh, with, with higher average listing prices, things like that. It's really, really cool. So we'll get into the nitty gritty, but um, here's, here's what, I've, what I've tried to teach people over the years is, is, is you want to spend the time on the leads that you're going to convert the, the easiest, right? Expireds and FISBOs, your sphere of influence, uh, referrals, those are the ones that are, that are going to convert the, the best. And that's where you spend your time. But there's a limited supply of those, right? We, it, for people who set aside two or three or four hours a day to prospect or 20 hours a week to prospect, uh, especially for the last 18 months, there have not been enough expired listings in most of our markets to keep us busy for that amount of time. So it doesn't mean that we don't prospect expireds, right? There's still been expired listings over the last couple of years, just not very many of them. For some of us, maybe only one or two in our market each day that, that fit the, the criteria that we're looking for. So we obviously want to call those. We don't ever want to stop calling those. When we get referrals, obviously we want to stay on top of those. Uh, when, we have, uh, when we have communication from past clients, we want to make sure that we're following up with that because those are the high converting leads that are going to produce for us really, really quickly and really consistently. But when there's time left in the day for us to continue to prospect and generate new business from new contacts, that's when a geo farming strategy really, really comes into play. I've already picked the low hanging fruit, but I still have time to stand under the tree and harvest. And so, uh, so that's when geo farming comes in. And a lot of people, there's different strategies of how to go about it, but it could be as simple as I have one zip code right? I pick a zip code. And when I'm not out working outside of that zip code, all of my efforts are going into that zip code. So let me, let me share a quick story about this. So um, a buddy of mine used to work at Red X years and years ago. He left to go work for, uh, for this huge farming corporation in California. And, uh, and his title was ranch manager. And so after he'd been there a year or 14 months or so, we had a conversation. I said, well, what do you do as a ranch manager? He said, well, I manage I manage farmland. And I went, yes, but what do you do, right? And, and he broke it down for me. And it was interesting because he went on to share a tremendous amount of information that he knew off the top of his head about the farmland that he was in charge of, right? He knew how many acres of cabbage and how many acres of almonds. He, he knew how many seasonal workers they'd need for harvest. He knew what the current yield that, that, that was going to provide. He knew when the watering schedule was, he knew all this stuff, right? And if you think about what a farmer does to, to, to cultivate and nurture a, a, a crop to be able to harvest over and over and over again, they have to know that type of information. They have to know everything there is to know about what it is they're growing, about the seasons, about the weather, about the ground, about the markets, right? Well, real estate farming is no different. And so if I was going to pick a specific area, I'm going to begin to learn everything about that. I'm going to know how many homes are in that, in that zip code or in that area. I'm going to know um, how many of those are single family versus multifamily or condo or town hall. I'm going to know um, the kind of the socioeconomic status of that, uh, of that region. I'm going to know what teams they root for, right? If I, if I, if I go and, and, uh, and put, and put, you know, some at marketing piece out. I don't want it to contradict what, what, what team I don't want to root for the rival team. Right. I want to know what community activities are going on. I want to know what the real estate markets are doing. Right. So this, but this is far more than just knowing how many homes are selling, what interest rates are. This is knowing the people in the area. This is going out. And, and uh, when you're going to sponsor a public event, you're sponsoring a public event that's going to be in front of these people. So just like my friend who, as a rancher, was, was out there learning everything there was to know about one specific area, that's how we need to geofarm with real estate. And, 
And that can take time, right? Just like farming, uh, planting a tree and hoping to harvest crop from that, it takes time to be able to do that. Now, um, GeoLeads with Red X is, is a fantastic way to do this, right? Because we provide information, we provide the tools, we provide everything that you need to, to be able to adequately build a relationship out of thin air with these people. And that's really what we're trying to do with geofarming, right? We're, we're trying to initiate a relationship with a stranger and turn that relationship into, uh, into, into something that will produce fruit for us over and over and over again. Uh, and so it's, it's, uh, it's a, usually a long-term play for most real estate agents. You don't get in and garden an area and hope to plant a flower and be done. We're farming an area and that takes time, usually uh, multiple seasons to be able to harvest over and over and over again. Not that you can't get the random piece of fruit that's going to come. Not that that you're not going to get a deer that, I mean, a deer is going to walk through the orchard. We get to take out an expired listing that happens to be in our farming area, but we want to spend time geo farming. And that's, I think one of the most important things, Jockey, is to, to, yeah. to understand that this is, this is the long game. And I love the analogy that you gave about, you know, farming, because truly it stinks when you're farming. I mean, years ago, that's what I was taught by one of my coaches is that when you farm and when you're cultivating it, it stinks. People are going to hang up on you. People are going to not answer your call or people are going to say what well, we were talking with Jake about before we came on, you know, that, you know, you, yeah. you're, you will get that. And that's part of the game here. That's part of farming. So show us and die, take us into a little bit about like what we said earlier, like into the geo leads through Red X, where do we find them? And, and okay. what are the next steps? Yeah, let me let me show that to you here. And and um, it, it's interesting. So I while I'm pulling this up, I live in a neighborhood. Um, I live in a neighborhood where where we get. Let's see. Let me make sure I'm sharing the uh, the right thing here. Can you guys are, are you guys seeing vortex up on my screen there? Yes. Okay. Um, it's interesting because I, my my neighborhood I get. I get door knocked by solar companies and pest control companies and real estate agents quite often. And, and one of the things that's so disappointing is I'll get a real estate agent who's ambitious enough to go out there and knock on my door and try to initiate that contact out of nowhere with zero follow-up. There's, there's zero effort to maintain that relationship. I took the time to answer the door and have a conversation but they never follow up. They always leave me a refrigerator magnet or a flyer or a business card, but there's never any follow-up. And what they did is they planted the seed and then they failed to follow up, right? They failed to cultivate the relationship until right. we could harvest. And that's one of the biggest challenges here. Like I said, it's the long game and we want to make sure that we're doing that over time, but we have to understand that, that, that it takes time to cultivate those relationships. But let me show you how the GeoLeads tool works because it's so cool. And Jonky, I know that you, that you said that you're using this. I think you've got ISAs that are using this. Um, yeah. And yeah, and when it comes to generating leads out of thin air, uh, there isn't a better tool out there than than Red X Geo Leads. There just so isn't. And so I have to I have to confess, Tristan and um, Mark, I have to give a shout out because we've used Red X for so long, almost about two or three years ago, we started using Red X. And from that, just with the circle prospecting side of things, we've seen amazing results. And I, yes, it's hard work. Yes, we are, you know, our ISAs are dialing every single day, circle prospecting, meaning, you know, actives are coming soon, closed, pending, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. I didn't even know that neighborhood existed. My bad. I didn't even know that neighborhood existed, you guys until we started doing circle prospecting. And then from that one neighborhood, we listed four homes in the past one year. And it was so awesome to see that, you know what, just dialing this database, it really made that happen. So uh, I love Red X. And this is why I wanna dive into the other parts of Red X because now we know what neighborhood did, neighborhood did for us, right? And um, circle prospecting did for us. Now we wanna dive into other um, possible you know, pockets of, of uh, leads where we can find these um, motivated buyers or sellers. You never know where you can find them. Yeah. So, so let me show you how easy this is because that's the biggest thing, right? Is, is the more difficult a task, the less likely we are to, to, to do it, right? That's true of brushing your teeth or going to the gym or whatever. And so what we want to do is we want to eliminate friction 
that allows us to, that, that prevents us from acting, right? We want, and, and, and that's why GeoLeads is so simple. So um, when, when somebody's logged into Vortex, when they're logged into Red X, which we've done lots of gem demonstrations on LCA webinars over the years, but if this is, um, if this is new for somebody, if you're looking at this and, let's, and going, man, I've never seen this before, this is Red X's platform, right? So you log in and this is what it takes you to uh, when you have a Red X account. Uh, this is Vortex. Vortex, uh, the idea behind it is all of your leads in one place. So not only all your Red X leads, but this is leads that you're getting from other sources as well. You can put all into one place and manage all of these from one place. But like I said, once you've gone through the high converting leads and you go, well, I still have time to generate. Jonky, you even mentioned, look, it's difficult, but better to do something difficult than pr that produces than nothing at all, which unfortunately we see a lot of in our industry, right? Yeah, and here's the beauty of it, Tyler, is that you dial, dial, dial. And of course, you know, your ISAs are you, whoever's dialing gets discouraged. That's just the name of the game. But when you start hitting the yeses, you know, that's when you're like, okay, yeah, I'm getting somewhere. And I'm constantly recommending this because I think it's a great tool, Tristan. I know we, ha you guys have it at Tristan um, Amada team, right? And Mark, I know you guys have it as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it really, for, for us, it works really well. But here's another thing, Tyler, I wanted to find out from you is, do you just, these leads right here, do you just incubate them here or you can put them into your CRM? Oh. Yeah, that's yeah. That, that, no, that's a great question. So, um, so Vortex is not a CRM. Mm -hmm. and, and, re and we've been really, really blunt about that in the past and, and we will continue to be because it's not. There's, there's certain features that Vortex lacks that would, that would allow us to confidently call it a CRM. Uh, but the, the, what, it, what it is, is a lead management system. I like that you said incubate, right? It's an incubator. It's, it's, um, it's a separate system that you would use in tandem with your CRM. And the reason why is because you treat your leads different than you treat your contacts, exactly. right? You have different processes in place. You have different methods of communication. Uh, I mean, imagine, imagine having a geo lead and putting them into the same campaigns that we have for our past clients. It, it's just not the, it's just not the right channel, nor is it the right message. Right. Uh, and so, so Vortex, um, probably 70 to 75% of Red X customers use some other CRM in tandem with Vortex. And so once you get somebody to the point within Vortex where you go, hey, this is now a contact. This is somebody that I have initiated and begun a relationship. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nurture and, 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 uh, and cultivate that relationship to continue the farming analogy. I'm going to cultivate that relationship over time. You can take those from Vortex and, and push those over into other platforms. Right. Some platforms we have we have a sync with and then, and, but any of them you can export. So if it, it's this, and that's as simple as hitting the button for export. I mean, it's so, so simple. And then it downloads a CSV file and you can upload that right to whatever platform. So even if you have to do it manually, even if you're not using uh, one of the platforms that we have a connection with, it's still so, so simple that we're talking, we're talking seconds of your time to complete that task, not minutes exactly. or, or yeah. hours. Very, very simple to do. But, but let me show you how simple and easy it is to create leads with, 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 with GeoLeads. Because again, call your expireds, call your sphere, call your referrals, follow up with those. Don't stop following up with those. But once you run out of, of, of people to contact from those lists, GeoLeads is the go-to to generate leads on demand. And here's the thing, Tyler, if any one of you guys have listened to Tristan's YouTube videos or been in his coaching programs, you'll understand that this is a shifting market we're in, guys, right? So, yeah. I mean, when we're in a shifting market, we need to pick it up a little bit instead of pulling back and take it a step, a notch up and really start dialing, really start focusing on those expires that nobody is calling or running out of the market right now or saying, oh, I need to get a job or this or that. Go chase the ones that are really looking. And this is the, this is the platform for sure. And by the way, you guys, if um, you guys want to get to know a little bit more about Red X, we do have that link right there, redx.biz, <clears throat> excuse me, slash LCA. And of course, this is recorded on, on our YouTube channel, LCA, always there for you guys. So take it away again, Tyler, tell us a little bit more about 
what you were about to like where can we find these leads here now yes yeah, so so right in here is is the geo leads button and there's a few ways that you can generate a list i'm going to show you the most commonly used one um, and then if somebody has other questions i i have an amazing team of people at red x uh, and and they're they're willing to jump on the phone with you answer questions um, you can go to that link if you're ready to get signed up and then work with our customer success team red x has amazing support to help you to be successful so I'll show you the basics. And then if you want to get deeper, um, uh, you can reach out to, to somebody on my team there. But the geo leads button is right here. And so when I click that, what it does, it pulls up a map. Um, and, and there's a few things that I could do is, is if I want, I can just zoom in and I can find a place on the map. And, uh, and, and you know, if I'm, if I'm canvassing an area, so to speak, or if I've got a zip code that I'm working my way through, this is easy to do to come in and and just go, okay, now I'm going to work on these, you know, this city block and, and work, work my way around. Uh, but you might also come and drop an address in here. So um, I'm actually in Montana at the moment uh, at my uh, at my parents' house. So I'm going to put my parents' address in here. Don't tell them that I did this. That what are you? Oh, Big Fork. I thought you were going to be like um, Whitefish. No, Tyler, I'm, I'm on my way over. Can you fire up the grill? <laughs> you, you got it. So, so you... You mentioned you mentioned Big Fork, Tristan. Where I mean, Whitefish. Whitefish is like thirty minutes from here. Oh, this, this is yeah. yeah. This is this is the area that this is where I grew up. So um, I've got my parents. My parents' house has a pin on it right there. And if I wanted to prospect to the people around my parents' house, I could just say, you know what? Show me the nearest. We'll say for the, for this demonstration, I'll say, show me the nearest two hundred homes to this particular address. And so you can see it kind of just does it in a, in a, in a radius there. Um, it's not an exact radius, it's just what are the homes geographically closest and there's 200 properties right there. Uh, and, and it gives me kind of a preview of that. If I hit this button now again, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a folder and go find all of the owner names and phone numbers for each of those homes with the blue pins and drop it into a folder for me, which I'll do in just a second here. But that might not be the way you wanna do it. If you were geo farming and you wanted to go section by section, then, then you might switch this around and you'd go, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this particular section right here. And same thing, I want to, I just wanna see the homes right inside that. And once you do that, Vortex will save it and show you. So you can see I've done searches around my parents' house before these, these different pins. And so I could just strategically, let's go reset boundary and let's go, looks like I haven't done this section over here. So let's, Let's do that and get preview in there and see how many homes there are, right? So I can, I can just work my way through an area or through a zip code or a subdivision piece by piece to generate the leads that I want to for the people that I want to prospect to. So again, looking to move into a new area, this is an amazing way to do that, right? You can, you can have people to call in that new geographic area right away. If you're looking to increase your average price point, um, most of us are able to kind of know what zip codes and towns and areas have higher priced homes than the average. So we can simply go to one of those and target that and pick mm -hmm. a spot. We could pick a central address and do a radius. We could draw blocks uh, like this, uh, the way that I like to do it. And then, and then start to generate these lists of leads that once they're in Vortex, they remain there. So these are people that once we begin to initiate the relationship, please don't be one of the, the realtors that knocks on my door and never follows up with me ever again. But well, instead, create the relationship and then we want to nurture those. That's when you're going to drop somebody into your CRM and, and, and cultivate over time. You're going to follow up in a few months and go, hey, I knocked on the door. Nothing was happening at the time, but you've noticed that inter interest rates have gone up. Has that increased your timeline at all? Have you thought about selling now and taking advantage of equity? And, Right. I mean, having those conversations, cultivate the real, cultivate that. I mean, uh, this is the first. So this year, my kids and I, my, I have four sons. We did a garden this year and uh, and all four of my kids have been out there. And, and you know, what's what's so frustrating is they keep pulling out the carrots going, well, when are they going to be done? Right. I'm like, not for a while. Right. They just keep yanking them out. Um, and I'm like, you have to, you have to cultivate it. You have to yeah. let it grow. Give it time. Give it, give it the water and energy. Exactly. And I think that's where most the patients, the patients part is what we as realtors don't have at times. And it's like, okay, we want instant results. 
that is not the case here, you guys. So when you're looking for instant results, I think sometimes I have to say you're in the wrong business because it takes time to build relationships. I mean, you know, cultivating is part of our business. It's part of us as realtors to build that relationships, networking, cultivating, building, all of those things, right? And this obviously is a great tool. GeoLeads is amazing. Um, I know Michael Gavin has a question saying, what happens when you have saved your search and the ownership changes? Does the system update the ownership changes automatically? So it won't it won't update unless you go through and and, and do a search on those again. But there are some things that you can do. I mean, um, in in yeah, once you've done the research, that research will exist as a static list of information unless you go in and refresh it. Uh, and so all of these you see here that I that have this green pin right here on my screen, all of these. Uh, based on this key here are, are searches that I did in the last six months. If anything has changed since I did that, it's not going to reflect in my list unless I go in and refresh it. There are some neat filters though when you're prospecting because you may not want to prospect to um, you may not want to prospect to a, a property if it just sold, right? And so if you want to look at anything that just sold, so I could say like in the last two years, show me the nearest 500 properties to my parents but weed out anything that's been purchased in the last two years. And that's, that's something that I could do there. So near, oh, let's go search neighborhood 500, two years. And so what it'll do is, is once it drops my pins, you see all these gray pins, all these gray pins are the ones that have been sold in, in the previous two years. And so I may not want to begin to initiate a, a relationship with that person right now, because the likelihood of them selling is much less than somebody who's owned their home more than two years, for example. So there are some things that you can do to filter leads prior to the search. Uh, but to answer that question, once once the data is there, it's static, unless you go in and, and look that information up again. Cool. The, it, so here's what's so cool though, is, is uh, who, who it was Michael, I think you said that asked that question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here's the cool thing, Michael, is, is when you're prospecting to geo leads, it almost doesn't matter. It almost doesn't matter if they're still the owner or not. What you're going for is you're going for conversations because assuming they still live in the area, it's still somebody that you can help. As long as they live in your state, you're still licensed to help that person. And if they no longer live in the state, real estate is fantastic for referrals. So you can always refer somebody out. Um, and so while it's it's helpful and you go, yeah, ideally, uh, you know, I wanna talk about the home that I'm in the neighborhood that I'm searching. Assuming you get somebody to answer the phone, it's still almost the exact same conversation. It's it's hey, you know what we we sold a home in this area, and they go they might go oh well I you know I sold that home you know six months ago I don't own that home anymore and you go oh great well where where did you move to well we moved to the next town over excellent do you know anybody looking to buy or sell in the next thirty days and if not are you looking to buy or sell in the next so, thirty days so yeah. it's almost the same conversation right. Exactly. And another thing you can also add to that is that, okay, great. Well, while I have you on the phone, who do you know that might be looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate yes. in your neighborhood or family or friends? You know, those are great questions to ask. It doesn't have to be them in particular looking or, you know, you right. can capture them as a lead and take it from there. Well, I have something to add on that. With, yes. with the current market changing, mm -hmm. one of the things that you can add is knowing that the consumer in general is wondering when the market is going to crash. Yeah. You can always add, hey, instead of instead of approaching it that way, and they say, no, I'm not selling or doing anything. Is that awesome? Well, look, the main reason I'm calling is because I live in the neighborhood, if you do, like I do. I live in the neighborhood, and I'm always wondering what's happening. And so I like to keep all my neighbors up to date as to what's happening on the market. Is it okay if I add you to our, our monthly, weekly, whatever newsletter? Mm -hmm. And this way I can show you what's happening around there. You can open it and look, we can email back and forth if you have questions as well. And then you start creating a database. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So here's, here's the way I look at it is, is that's, that actually is going to be the more common result, I think, right? Is, is somebody that you go, look, let me get your email address. Let me, do you mind if I follow up with you? That's probably going to be the more common result, right? Again, we're farming. It takes time. This is the initiation of, of the relationship. We're just planting the seed with this phone call. And then hopefully what we can do is we get permission to follow up, right? We're going to nurture and cultivate the relationship by 
following up with emails and, and giving market information and relevant content that they that they want to see whether or not they've transacted with you, right? And, yeah. and, and that's what you're doing. Now, every once in a while, you're going to get somebody that goes, yeah, wow, actually, we have thought about selling. You're going to go, excellent. And, and, and do you have a realtor in the area that you would work with? And they're going to go, no, actually, we don't. Excellent, right? So, so think of it as you're farming, but every once in a while, a deer is going to walk through, going to walk through the orchard, and you're going to you're going to target that prey and take them down right then and there. You're going to you're going to have opportunities to hunt and and get quick transactions. But I think what Tristan said is probably far more common a, a, a result of a conversation is we're just initiating this, and and now we're getting permission to follow up and and build the relationship. Does that make sense? Absolutely, it does. Yeah. Because again, it's called farming, geo farming. There's a reason why it's named that, and it takes time, like uh, you know, like everything else in our in our industry. So, anything else you want to add, uh, Tristan, Mark? Anything we want to? Yeah, add? actually, real quick, uh, Tyler, can you show us uh, for the for the follow up game on this um, where to go to find the folder for yeah, uh, the yeah. geo leads we made? Yeah. So so once you've done that search, your geo leads all show up under a geo leads folder. And, uh, and, and depending on how you do the search will depend on what it names the folder, um, usually a date range or, an, or a, if you used a central address and did the radius, it'll use that address. You can go and rename the folders, whatever you want, but everything exists over here on the side. So I can go, hey, here's the, 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 um, the one in Alabama, the search I did in Alabama from June 20th, here's one from June 8th, uh, you know, and I, so I can go and I can see all of these. Now these folders, are a static list of information, meaning it's not going to change. These leads aren't going to aren't going to go out, uh, leave this folder. That these seventy six leads that are in this folder right now will always remain in this folder. Now, what's really cool is if somebody also has our expired listings, where we have MLS information that's coming in as well. We'll even update when some of these will hit the market. We'll update when they sell. We'll we'll show that hey, there's this is one of your geo leads. It's also a for sale by owner, right? Like that would be a really oh, crucial bit of information to know, or this is, a, a, you know, somebody in this geo leads list. Let's see if there, if there are any, I've got to move my, doesn't look like there's any in this particular one, but I could come in. In fact, let me just show you, because it's so cool is I can come in here. I can go geo leads. I love the expired feature too. Um, yes, it, it's updated to let you know that it's, it is listed. You don't have to go hunting for it. Right. So include multiple lead types. Okay, so you can see all of these that have pulled up are leads in my list that, that are geo leads that also have another lead type from Red X. So we've identified these as another lead type. So these ones here, for example, uh, with these green are these are properties that are in the foreclosure process. So these are people in, in the lists that I've searched over the years that are also in pre-foreclosure. That's a helpful bit of information to have. Or if one of these was you know, recently expired from the MLS, that would show as well. And having that information, is it's all about crafting the conversation, right? Not every conversation. I know that we have scripts and I am such a believer in, in knowing your scripts really, really well. But the reason we have scripts is to help us stay on track as often as possible, not to, to have the exact conversation all the time, right? So there, we, we have to be able to adapt in, in certain situations. And a situation like this, where I get on the phone with Edward and Edward goes, oh yeah, actually I might, you know, my property's in foreclosure. That's a really valuable bit of information. Oh, it changes the conversation that I have with Edward. So there's some cool stuff in here that way that 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 shows that. But ultimately, the geo leads is is such a simple tool to get out there and create leads on demand uh, that that it's it's one of those that I believe every agent should have. It's one of those tools that every agent should have because very very rarely do we ever uh, do we do we always have a surplus of leads. Let me make sure I said that right. Yeah, very rarely do we always have a surplus of leads. In fact, it's usually the opposite. It's usually that we are out searching for leads, which is why companies like Red X exist. Um, and, uh, and, and having those geo leads that are, that's valuable information. It's a specific person that I can take specific action with on this call. 
uh, it's uh, that's a very, very valuable thing to have. We want to create those conversations. Um, and like I said, probably just to send an email, like Trish, Tristan said, probably just to follow up with over time. But every once in a while, you're going to get those people that go, yeah, actually, we have thought about selling or yeah, actually, I've got a rental property that I'm trying to offload and uh, divest into a couple of different properties, right? So the, it, every, every once in a while, the gold nuggets fall, but usually what you're doing is you're you're building a relationship. It is very much a farming effort, long-term. At the end of the day, it's all about building that relationship, number one. And number two, you don't have to go searching for leads. If you're a new agent, if you've been in this business long enough, you know that this is a time, like I said before, and Tristan even said, you don't have to be forceful in getting that information. You just send them information. It's coming from contribution. We need to contribute to them in order to gain their trust. So they will decide at the end of the day, they decide that, yes, this is the realtor that I want to work with. Again, it's building that trust and that's why it takes time. So, well, thank you so much, Tyler. We really, really appreciate you at LabCut Agents, um, always giving us pieces of golden nuggets to work with. So thank you so much. Mark, Tristan. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Yes. Guys. Yes. See you Bye, soon. everyone. Bye, <laughs> guys. Bye.